let's get into marketing. Okay. Marketing, the idea of awareness, right? So what type of information can you give someone that they just don't know how to market the product, how to make it different, how to communicate it? Yeah. Um, I think my number one, um, what, what were we giving tips? Yeah. Uh, get clarity on your messaging, right? Mm. How do you communicate your offer? So you mentioned something earlier where a lot of people are selling the feature and benefits and not the payoff. Mm -hmm. And the messaging has nothing to do with the features and the benefits. So when you're communicating your offer, one of the top mistakes that I see people make, I'll go on your website and it's like, oh, I've got this group. Uh, I've got this community and in the community, we meet once a week and it's on Zoom and it's at 7 p.m. And you can invite a friend. I know nothing really about what the mission is or how this serves me. So your messaging needs to clearly communicate how this works for the ideal customer. We don't really care about the Zoom. We don't really care that it's at seven o'clock after dinner and, you know, after traffic. We don't care that we get you one time, two times or three times a week. I need messaging that's going to speak to me to say, this is what you're getting. You're going to leave feeling empowered. Being a part of this community makes you feel empowered. You've got a built in accountability tribe. You've got, you know, you're, you're going to leave in, in four extra results. Like you're no longer going to be stuck on the sofa anymore. You're going to be ready to launch into action. That's the messaging that's going to resonate with me if I am stuck, if I'm feeling like I don't have accountability, if I'm feeling like I'm not taking enough moves, not one time on Zoom every week at 7 p.m. So your messaging needs to speak directly to your ideal customer and picking an ideal customer would be number two. And whenever you're creating your messaging is really important, like from Instagram, when you're posting um, to your website, it needs to sound like I'm talking directly to you, not to several people. So when you see me on Instagram and I'm posting in my com in my captions, I'm not saying Y'all got to go get my offer. I'm saying if you are somebody who's experiencing mm, this, you need to click the link in my bio. You need the empowerment. So your messaging on everything is talking to one person. Pick a name. Who is your avatar? Is it Keisha? Talk to Keisha. Is it Joe? Talk to Joe. And all of your messaging is directly for Joe and Keisha because you're looking for a thousand Joes, 10,000 Joes, 5,000 Keishas. That's what I got. I know I gave one and two. That's strong. Yo, mine would, well, mine would piggyback so well off what Donnie just said. You have to be extremely good at handling objections. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, for example, say, for example, I want to appeal towards we'll take, sales or marketing. Well, marketing. Okay. Yeah. You Both. have to be. Yeah. yeah. Cause the thing about marketing is what gets them in. And if I, if I hear about, let's take, for example, uh, we're selling cribs to pregnant mothers or whatever the case may be. If I have to market to pregnant mothers, it's gonna be like, hey, are you tired of cribs always breaking down? That might be objection number one. Are you, are you, you're tired of seeing the super expensive cribs? Objection number two. And you know, they're just really, really hard to put together. Objection number three, then we have the perfect crib for you. Yeah. Right. That you you want to handle objections so quickly and completely yeah. obliterate down to the ground. So they have no resistance yeah. towards buying your product. Right. Yeah. So by the time they come in and they see the thing, it's like, where do I buy? Yeah. So and you're just considering for clarity, all of the things that people would say yeah. would be a reason that they're not going to accept this message. I want to yeah. actually give every, like, we're all entrepreneurs here, right? So I want to give everybody an exercise oh right God. now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, want, I get amped up sometimes. Before you do that exercise, real quick to answer your question, to make this make sense, in the marketing phase, we are pre-thinking about what the objections are going to be. Yeah. And we're including that in our messaging so that, oh, it's like, oh, they already answered that. And, uh, but on sales with objections, you're handling an objection that the marketing didn't cover in real time. Gotcha. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, Exercise absolutely. Us. Yeah, absolutely. So we're all entrepreneurs here, right? The number one thing you can do in your business is write down a list of every single problem that your potential customer would have, right? Yes. If you're in, let's take for that same example, and, and, and I'm taking something that's complete unremoved from me. I'm clearly not a mom. I clearly don't have a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Say, for example, we're taking pregnant moms. <laughs> you don't have no mom. kids? Nah. It's not clear. You uh, look true, like you true, got a couple, true. Right? You look like a dad. You, you, yeah. I look like, I think, respectfully, <laughs> you feel me? So, I mean, say, for example, right? I would write down every Can't. single, I would write down every single problem, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have time. They don't have money. They don't have the freedom. They're, they got their in-laws badgering them or whatever the case may be, right? Write down every single problem, your potential customer. And it also helps if you are your own potential customer, 
right? Some mm-hmm. of y'all are moms. Some mm-hmm. of y'all got kids. Mm-hmm. What are the problems that you've had faced? And that's how you can make your product better. Once you write down. Well, wait, because this is real good. What would be outside of what Brian just gave? What would be a problem or an objection somebody could have about a crib with the mic? Who's got one? What would be an objection? So I'll go first. An objection could be um, how fast will my child outgrow this? Mm. All right. Who's got another one? Was it you? No. Who's got one right here? Because we want to we want to give you the exercise, but I want to make sure you know how to think about it because it's not just cost. It's not just it's safety. How safe is this? Absolutely. Right. So to bounce off exactly what you said, can this crib be converted over mm. and be a, you know, a, 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 into, yeah, a toddler toddler bed. Correct. Yeah, into a toddler Ooh. bed. Anybody else right here on the end? How durable is, is this? How like, durable is it? Is it? One yeah, more. Absolutely. And then for me, it'll be like, what's the different colors this crib's come in? Okay. Okay. Or do, yeah. So well, are they customizable? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm preferring something customizable is yours. Absolutely. All right. Next Absolutely. Step. So literally the, the point of the exercise is to get into the mind of your potential prospect and list out all the potential problems, all the potential objections. And like I said, it's a lot easier when you're your own customer. Right. And then step number two is to ease for every single product problem that you write, right? What's the benefit of your product that addresses this problem. And if you don't have it, that's something to think about. Does my crib, is it affordable? Is it safe? Can it be converted to a to- mm-hmm. to a toddler room? Is it? Does it come in different colors? Does it? Can it grow with my kid or yeah. whatever the case may be? Is it gonna have something that's gonna kind of entertain them while they're in the baby crib or something like that? It. Can they flip out of mm-hmm. it, right? Are they, are, does it come with like maybe an in-house baby monitor or something like right. that, right? And you wanna start seeing, does my product address, does, the, my, does my product Y address all the problems X? And if it does not, you might have some more work to do. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that this will literally, it's called an iteration cycle. It will instantly make your product better and better and better. And not only that, you'll be able to sell easier and easier and easier and market more and more and more mm-hmm. because, and go ahead. You just detailed the process of potential innovation too. 100%. So you said something. I'm not sure I've been off of the crib buying market for a long time, but I know that new parents need two things urgently. They need a crib and they want a baby monitor. If you have a crib, somebody put it together. He said it first, right? If you're offering a I crib, need my royalties. That come, <laughs> let's just say your crib comes with um, baby monitoring from like three different angles. Fire. That could be the innovation piece. You didn't have to innovate the crib. You made an iteration that now makes this innovative. What if you had a, a, a piece that alerts you when the baby is pulling on that side gate too hard and then it triggers your camera? It, it syncs via Bluetooth to your camera. That's innovation. That's why it's so important to understand what your competitors are doing and what your market needs. Because now if you're into furniture building and you're like, I do a dynamic job with cribs, well, you're just putting a whole other crib out there. But if you understand the market, now you're like, but nobody has a crib with the motion sensor that says the baby is pulling or pulling up a little too hard. There's a little more, a little too much weight on this side panel. He might be about to flip out of it. And just the, oh, I love this. Now, literally, <laughs> literally, and I will, cause I'm reading a book right now called Ready Fire Aim by Michael Masterson. Highly recommend everybody uh, check out that book. And he talks about something when you're marketing and you're going through this iteration cycle like Donnie just put out and you have that one feature that nobody has, that just 10 x your marketing because mm. now you can say we are the only Person, we are the only company that offers X, Y, Z. Wait, wait, wait. Because in sales and marketing, what's important to identify are your onlys. Write that down. It is important uh, to identify your onlys. Yo, yo, <laughs> what you say? I'm sitting there like. <laughs> <laughs> now, I see everybody's in the notebook. Yes. Like, it is so important to identify your onlys. You don't want to be a company made up 100% of what everybody else does. You are the only person who does this. We are the only crib that has 3D exposure on camera. We are the only crib that offers cameras. You don't have to buy a whole other system. We're the only crib that will literally sync to your Apple watch. So, you know, if your baby is moving around too much when they're with the nanny, like you have to identify your onlys. What is it that you do? That is your only nobody else does it key for personal brands. It has something to do with your personality. It has something to do with your personality. I know in my space right now, I am the only coach that is as raw and transparent as all the other coaches out here right now. Nobody really does that like me. I'm the only one that brings you really into my lifestyle. And I coach off of experience, not just framework that I learned. I might not be the only who does that, but 
I'm, I'm, I'm like one of the only who does, but what is your only, right? And think about that, write it down. And that is your unique proposition factor. So when somebody says, well, what do you do that's different? Oh, well, we're the only ones who do this. And if you mm. don't have one, get one, get one, mm. figure out what that only is. Put the camera on the crib. What is your only? Because people can't argue with that. Like they, they, once you've done the market research and you say, hey, look, listen, I'm the only one that is this role or I'm the only one that offers this feature. Yeah. They look to the left. They look to their right. They don't see one. Yeah. Sales done. Mm. Sales done. Yeah. So the goal actually isn't to get the sale. The goal is to just help them make the best decision for them. You see what I'm saying? So you're so in a high on, ticket going, in, a, in this high Swing ticket it. communication, you're you're basically interviewing them, and they're auditioning for you. Let me say, let me let me explain. Let me break this down, right? So most people think that you got to sell people on why they should buy. When you do your marketing and stuff right, great marketing makes selling unnecessary. Great marketing makes, makes selling, selling unnecessary. Unnecessary. Because when they come to you, if your marketing is done right, okay, hold on, Joe, sold. that's the topic. Okay. <laughs> Yo, there's so many bars in this joint. Like everything could be in the title. Great selling, great makes, marketing, great marketing makes selling unnecessary. Makes selling unnecessary. Yeah. Okay. Explain that. Because when people, so think about it. I'm gonna use you as an example. When somebody gets a conversation with you, and you make them an offer, your marketing and your um, so um, prolific in the industry and what you produce. You don't got to sell nobody on working with you. They already see your value. They done watched hours of your show. They done seen tons of your content. They done seen you build a brand. They done seen you on stages. Your reputation precedes you. They already know it's expensive to work with you just based on your position in the marketplace. So it ain't like, you know, you can either buy or you can keep your problem, right? So they're selling you on why you should allow them to buy Versus you selling them on why they should buy. Here's why you should let me buy, Dave. Versus you saying, here's why you should buy. I'm the best at it. We got the most success stories. Are this. We're better than those guys. Is this. We're going to do it all for you. Most people be doing all that because their marketing ain't tight. If your marketing tight, people show up ready to sell you. Dang, they either buy or you let them keep their problem. Yeah. Golly. That, Can go you ahead. walk me through... Um, the like a sales like what's some foundational sales stuff that I need to learn or marketing stuff so that because you still got to get them on the phone yeah right yeah so if I'm I'm a new entrepreneur and yep. I want to make some money and I have a great product yeah what are the things that you see that people are doing wrong I think the biggest thing is like um, most people most marketers well most business first and foremost this is foundational is whatever you sell you got to see yourself as a marketer first. Mm -hmm. So if you're a speaker, author, um, you sell cheesecake, I don't care. You're a marketer first. So you're a marketer of that product, right? Most marketers make the mistake of trying to create desire, right? Most, Most people, marketers make the mistake of trying to create desire. Trying to create desire. They think they have to create desire. Here's the cool thing. You don't have to create desire. Like the desire already exists in the marketplace. Your job with your marketing is to channel the desire to your offer. So the desire is already there. Mm. Your, goal, your job with your marketing is to take that desire. Because like, for example, let's say, for example, somebody's old person. Like you, like you training now. Dude ain't had to create a desire for you to want to train and get in better shape. You already had the desire. Correct. Who knows how long, right? Mm. You, however y'all connected, because you could have went and hired anybody. You know everybody. But for some reason, the desire was channeled to that his particular offer for whatever particular reason. And it's the same thing with people buy anything. If somebody's hungry and they're driving down the street. Now, Old National Camp Creek is a lot of restaurants. They're hungry. They already got a desire to eat. Something about the marketing channels the desire to go eat at that particular restaurant. So all you're doing is getting in front of the desire. So how do you get in front of the desire? You figure out, okay, what's their current reality? Like, where are they right now? And then what's their preferred reality? So where are they now? Where do they want to go? And like immense detail, like detail, 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 detail. And then you got, they got this transformation gap that's in the middle of it. So your, mm. your job. Hold on, because that, okay. that, that, it kind of makes sense because, and I don't know what restaurant it was, but what's the restaurant there? There's slogans like why wait or something like that, or maybe not even why wait, uh, or what's the joint not going anywhere for a while? 
Grab a snicker. snicker. Yeah. yeah. So they know that the desire is there and they're they're identifying their market of somebody who is um, not going anywhere for a while. Yeah. That's genius stuff. Yeah. Like, I know you want this chocolate. Yeah. But now it's got to prompt you in a way that says... And I bet, I, I'm willing to bet if we, was to pull, if we was able to pull the data, I guarantee that people who eat Snickers are mostly people who like work in corporate America. Because they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Because <laughs> think about it. What entrepreneurs you know you be around that eat Snickers? And you know a lot of entrepreneurs. That's a fact. What event have you went to in Cats is in there eating Snickers? That's crazy. I don't know nobody who eats Snickers. Not that I, not that they don't don't eat Snicker. They just never just ate one around me. Right. <laughs> that I've seen. You feel me? That's crazy. <laughs> Marketing is such a game. Okay, you're were, you were saying something. Okay. And I, I kind of cut you off because my brain went somewhere else. Okay, so there's um you gotta channel the desire. Yep. The desire's there, you yep. just gotta channel them in your direction. Yeah. To your product. <laughs> to your product. Yeah. How do you get them there? Good question. Because you said there's a there's a, there's a, there's a gap. Somewhere. Yeah. So there's a transformation gap. So it's like here's where you are. So you want to make more money, for example, but you don't really want to make more money. You want to have more time. You want to be home with your kids. You want to be able to travel. You want to be able to have freedom. You want to be able to wake up when you want. Whatever the case may be. That's where you want to be. But you're here now, working a job, having to sit in traffic. You're never with your kids. They're growing up without you. The wife is complaining. That's your current reality. Your preferred reality is the opposite of that. And what's the thing that's in between them? In between that, here's the kicker. Most people think people buy based on price. People buy based on how fast you can help them close the transformation gap. Mm. And, and they're willing to pay a premium for it. We, I'm going to give you some real life examples. Mm. So when somebody goes to the club and they pull up and they go pay VIP, somebody might pay $300 to get in the club. The current reality, they're outside the club. The preferred reality, they want to be inside the club. Mm-hmm. Fat, and their transformation gap is outside the club to how fast can you get me in here? 300, I'm in. Mm-hmm. It, don't lo- it don't make logical sense, right? You get in the club. All right, cool. The, pl- the goal, current reality, I came by myself or with some of the bros. Preferred reality. <laughs> I'm trying to go home. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preferred yeah. reality, when I leave, situation different. Yeah. How do I do that? So this is my current and preferred. Now I got my transformation gap. We got to leave with something. I need to sit on a stage after buy a bottle that's going to attract. The bottle is thirty dollars in the liquor store. It's three hundred. It's three hundred here, and we got to get four, and we got to get the sparkles when they bring them over, so the girls will see. And now they start looking. All I'm trying to do is close the transformation gap. Yeah. So they so they're not buying these bottles. Because it logically makes sense or they're fiscally responsible. They're like, we just need to close the transformation gap. We'll figure that out tomorrow. What's the fastest way to get my get, get from my current reality to the preferred reality? To my preferred yeah. reality. And then how do you do that, right? Because it's like online, one of the biggest... So on the internet, bro, the, the internet... This, this interview is exciting. This is so look, exciting. Golly, dude, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm the sorry. The internet ir- irritates me in a lot of ways, bro. And I, sometimes I post it, but it like irritates me in a lot of ways because a lot of people are misled and they're miseducated, mm-hmm. right? So online, you we hear the word funnel a lot. Mm-hmm. And I get it. But people have like oversimplified what a funnel is. So people think that a funnel is some pages. It's part of it. But it's not all of it. Let me explain. Um, I'm going to break down the funnel first, and I'm going to explain what I mean by the funnel ain't the pages. So why they came up with the funnel, so if you look at an upside-down pyramid, it's four layers of it, right? right? So it's the the first level is awareness, people becoming aware of you for the very first time. So people watching this interview, um, they became a, some of them are becoming aware of me for the very first time. Mm-hmm. Some becoming aware of you for the very first time. That's yeah, awareness. For sure. They haven't went to a page yet, though, right? So they're already in the funnel. Yeah. Soon they watch their pod- soon they watch your podcast, they're in your funnel already, regardless if they go opt in. Some people are going to watch it and they're going to be interested. Some people are going to cut it off immediately. They're like, dude, talking too fast. He sound like a fast talking mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some are going to lean in. They're going to be like, dang, he's talking about. So they're interested. They haven't went to a page yet, but they're in the funnel. Now, the third level is engagement. So we may say, hey, go to such and such, go to morningmeetup.com or go to xyz.com. They're going to go to that page and, you know, read around, sign up, 
or just read around. Even if they go over there, click on it and go read around, they've engaged. That's the third step in the process. Mm-hmm. And then the fourth step at the bottom is becoming a client. But that's not, that ain't had nothing to do with pages. Your funnel, I tell people with your funnel, is like the before, the during, and the after, right? Gotcha. So all, all, most of the stuff in your funnel happens before they even get to your pages. But since online, funnels is a buzzword, people will go buy a funnel or they'll pay a lot of money to get somebody to build them a funnel, which they think is the funnel. And then they're wondering, they're like, well, I paid $25,000 to get this funnel done. Why ain't getting no traffic? Because those are just the pages. <laughs> you gotta right. have the other part of the. You gotta have the awareness. Ain't nobody aware of your pages. Right. Nobody's interested in the. You don't just go set it up and people just automatically find it in Google. Like I saw somebody in the group one time for one of these big software companies. I ain't gonna say the name because we ain't, they ain't cutting no check to the show, right? <laughs> However, somebody was in the group and they was like, "Hey, I got my funnel live, meaning their pages, but I ain't made no sales yet." And everybody was like, "Well, have you drove any traffic or sent anybody to it?" And guess what they said? No. No. So they think that the the pages that were built is the magic. Is the magic? That's not the magic. That's not the magic. They're just pages. It's just the pages. But online, everybody tell you that that's the funnel. It's not. It's the whole process. Think about it. Let's go back for a second. And direct response marketing has been around for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, what's direct response marketing? Direct response marketing is marketing. You got your dish, You got brand advertising marketing. You got direct response marketing. Direct response marketing. It's like you telling you having a specific message for a specific person, giving them a specific action to take. So you have an ad, you tell them to go do something. Tr- brand advertising marketing is like what Coca-Cola does. You like you see their logo all over the place. They're not giving you a call to action. They just want to be seen. Mm. Most small business owners go broke and lose because they're trying to do brand advertising marketing. They're like, well, I just want to get my name out there. No, that's not how it goes. You got to do direct response marketing and get people like in here. You know what I'm saying? So back in the day, you receive a letter in the mail a sales letter, you open it up, and if you wanted to buy it, you have to like cut out this thing, yeah, 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 you know what yeah. I'm talking about? And send fill it, it out, out send and it send it back. Yeah. Soon as you got that letter in the mail, guess what you're in? The funnel. The funnel. You ain't went to no page. You never go to a page. You cut that out. You're like, okay, you're aware of this. You're like, okay, I'm interested. You go find the scissors, you cut it out, you put your card information, put all your information on there, or you call the number on there, Oh, and then you send it back, and then you gotta wait for your offer to come. That was a funnel. When you ride, when somebody ride on the street and they see the McDonald's sign, you're in the funnel. You're in the funnel because you're aware. You, you're aware. And then you pull in. You're like, okay, I'm interested. Let me go ahead and see what's going on. So you pull in. You're like, huh? I don't know what I want. Just shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you in the drive through. You're like, hmm. Let me just get. You're in the funnel, and then get what's the action. You want to upsell that? You want to upsize that? Do you want fries? You with want fries that? with you want that? Apple pie. You want an apple pie? That's the upsell. You're going through the funnel. But have you went to pages? No. That's why people online be misled because they're miseducated. Dang. And I know we were talking about um, um, just kind of the desires there, right? Yep. Which makes even more sense why McDonald's is more of a real estate company. They'll just buy mm-hmm. the best real estate. Exactly. Because they know that the desire is there in this particular area. Yep. If there's enough traffic. Yep. If I put myself in the middle of this traffic... Exactly. Perfect example. I'll draw some people with my branding, with my colors, things of that nature. So, on social media, the desire is there to buy stuff. Yep. Right? So, how do we disrupt... Because there's so many offers. There's so many people volleying for this uh, this attention. Yep. How do I get myself in the way of all this traffic and drive people to... That desire to my offer. Makes sense. So basically, the biggest thing you got to do is like, you got to have, the first thing you got to do, you got to have the right message Mm -hmm. to the right market with the right offer. Right message to the right market with the the right offer. At the right time. At the right time. So most people don't have their campaigns laid out correct. Mm -hmm. Most people, they're they're marketing. It's like the stuff you do with your clients. Yeah. So most people, their marketing is only focused on making an immediate sale. They don't have any contingencies like the people don't buy right now. So, like, most people don't do retargeting ads. Mm-hmm. It blows me away. What is that? Like, when somebody clicks on your ad, so, like, some people say, man, I went to your website one time and you've been following me online for a year mm-hmm. because we got retargeting pixels and all that in place. So, you're gonna, we're going to follow you until you make a certain decision. Most people don't do that. Most people don't even have follow-up emails. If you ask most people, like, hey, dude, when you get a lead, like, how, do you got an email list? Do you send out emails? No. Nah. 
I'm trash at that, bro. I'm telling you, bro, you're sitting on, especially, like, how often you email your list now? A couple times a week. <clears throat> you probably, like, leave. But it's, like, it's update stuff. Yeah, you probably leave, like, an extra 100 grand a month on the table. Easily. Because all your money comes from the email list. Because think about it. Only 2% of the market is ready to do business now. The other 98% will be ready 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now. A year from now, two years from now, three years from now. But if they ain't hearing from you, you're not top of mind. And then when they're ready, when that trigger event happens in their life and they're ready to fix that problem, they're going to go do business with the person who's top of mind. But if you ain't top of mind because they don't hear from you like that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So we email our list every day. Twice a day. Every day. 100% without fail. We send in a wee email in the morning. If they don't open, we send it again at night to the people who don't open. Every day. Some people are like, what? So you have a system where you email me, if I don't open it, you're going to send me another one. With a different subject line. But if I, if you email me in the morning and I open it, you yeah. don't email me the next not, 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 not that day again, because you've got that email already. Unless we got a specific motion and, and it makes sense for multiple emails, but we just want to get in front of you at least once a day. So if you open the email. It's not too much? It's no. not spam? No. You chose to be here. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, yo, my mind is... So am I thinking, bro? <laughs> like, I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to bother people, but you signed up to be bothered. Yeah, you can always unsubscribe. Like, we have, it's the most ridiculous thing ever when people reply back to the email sometimes and they be like, stop sending me emails. I'd be like, look, at the bottom of the email, in every email, it's a link that says unsubscribe. You can, you don't have to be here. I won't even notice if you unsubscribe. <laughs> that's like somebody, that's like somebody coming on your Instagram post and complaining about your content. I'm posting too much. Just unfollow. It's that simple. I won't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine, I promise. <laughs> you don't agree with my perspective? That's fine. Unfollow. It'll be, we'll be, I'll be okay. Dang. You see what I'm saying? So, so you can't, it's like, cause think about it. I always like to use Oprah. When Oprah was on TV, she's a billionaire now. When Oprah was on TV, how often did she come on? Every day. Every day. So why wouldn't you come on every day in terms of your email? Let me ask this. In terms of the the um, the influencer marketing strategy, you teach that often, for right? For sure. How, how would that work for somebody that maybe doesn't even have as much traction as I got going on or somebody that just, they got an idea. Is influencer marketing good for a new business owner? Yes, influencer marketing is good for any business owner, any business owner, no matter what you're selling. Marketing is good for anybody, right? When, first of all, when you think of branding, let's start with that. Yeah. You have to have amazing branding because branding is a lifetime. Yeah. When we think of the Nike logo, that what they, the girl sued them, she made like $20,000 from that logo, that is a lifetime branding tool right yeah. so your branding gotta be aesthetically pleasing to attract the influencer if i had an amazing brand if you walk into the bakery you walk into the bakery right yeah. the branding on that is so amazing that you would bring anybody for free for sure. you would be for like sure. oh beyonce you're in town i gotta take you to the bakery yeah right i i wouldn't have to pay you to do that but what if i had a little rundown shabby co-working space with gray walls and tables and i'm like Hey, bring Beyonce to the bakery. Mm. You like mm -hmm. now you're scared because your integrity is based on my branding. Yeah. The fact that if I tell Beyonce right, to come to the bakery and it's shabby, she gonna think I'm crazy. Yeah. Right? And that's most of the time why influencers don't want to share your business to their audience because now their integrity is questioned because why are you sharing this? You got paid for this. Yeah. Right. That's right. So when you build the branding up to look so pristine and whether you have followers or not, if I go to a website and it's beautiful, works well, everything is right. There's plenty of things that you've bought from a beautiful website and had no followers. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. And there's plenty of things that were highly marketed. And when you got to the website, you were like, oh, something is off. Yeah. Even people's ads around their courses, you see all the ads, and when you get to the landing page, you're like, mm, 
something is off, right? Yeah. So that's where branding and marketing mix. So the yeah. first thing before you work with influencers is to really review your brand. Create a focus group with five people, 10 people, and say, would you buy from me? What does my Instagram profile need to look like for you to buy from me? What does my website need to look like for you to buy from me, right? Once you have that, then you say, now tell me five people, now that my branding is where it needs to be, tell me five influencers that you can see wearing my brand. Mm. They're going to be like, oh my God, you got a lipstick line? This person always wear lipstick and they never shout it out. This would be a great influencer for you, right? So now that your branding is stable and great. You take a note, Johnny. Taking notes. <laughs> All right. Now that your branding is amazing, you go to that influencer and you say, hey, listen, I noticed that you always wear red lipstick. And I know I'm a small business, but I have the capacity to ship hundreds of thousands of, u- of units. I just need the awareness. I would love to go 50-50 with you on a lipstick shade. And you promote it and market it on your, on your, to your audience. Mm-hmm. And bring them back to my website and I'll give you 50% of the proceeds. You don't need to ship anything. You don't need to handle any customer service. With the right branding, that influencer is going to be like, bet. Because they're already missing out on Monday. Yeah. They're already wearing the red MAC lipstick. Yeah. If they could partner with you that already has great branding. If you think of Chick-fil-A, even without the name without the aesthetic without the brand and think of the first chick-fil-a right the branding is still the chick-fil-a that we see today for sure so it was that branding that commands people to walk into your building or walk into order on your website the moment when they like this is canva (laughs) (laughs) this it gives fiber for sure it gives vendors, yeah. right? It gives drop shipping. Yeah. How many how many times have you wanted to buy from a brand and it looked like it's being drop shipped? Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to get this in five. I'm not, this is going to be 50 months. Yeah. Like this is definitely coming from China. Right. <laughs> you have black melanin matters or my black power <laughs> on stock photos yeah. that don't represent the culture yeah. so I, I really you know for everybody that's listening really look at what your brand represents yeah. and are you putting your best foot forward yeah. would you buy from you for real for real mm. not yes i would buy with my sob story yeah yes i would buy because i'm a single mom and i'm making it on canva and i'm doing the best that i can <laughs> no that's not good enough because your competitors are your competitors are smarter than you cuter than you they have more resources than you so you have to be the best right i always tell people save up if you're going to build a brand it doesn't cost a lot save up and hire the best person possible in your realm of business to give you advice on how you should do it so uh shout out to sarah sarah fontenot first person i really seen do this she was in she was in a company with this uh she was selling this product right it was like a weight loss type situation and every single day in her stories she posted like the same three or four posts every day mm-hmm. like i can expect i know this one i know the next post yeah, the next yeah, story yeah, yeah. and it came every single day mm-hmm. every single day and i had to ask her like yo you post the same thing every day she's like i make sales every day yeah Cause we're we be under the assumption that the thing that we posted today that somebody saw it, yeah. Uh, and a percentage, for one, a percentage of the people that are that, that are following you, a percentage of them actually even get shown your posts, and then it's a smaller percentage of people that actually see it, mm-hmm. like that was actually paying attention or mm-hmm. like saw it, right? So I think like pushing something every day consistently like with the with the event spaces bro you push it every day all the time and that helps with the marketing right because one the people who didn't see it get to see it an, in another touch point that people did see it the first time let me ask this how many people bought the morning meetup the very first time you saw it yeah how many people watch this how many people knew about it a year before you, a year or more before you actually bought it. 
Mm-hmm. Ain't that crazy? Mm-hmm. I have a question, you guys. If you get in a car accident today, who do you call? Just blurt it out. 911? 911, right? What was it? Mm-hmm. Who else do you call? <laughs> Tom yeah. Nugent. Have you ever done, have oh, you ever, my gosh. Have Tom. you ever done business with Tom Nugent? Okay, who else do you call? One call, that's all? We see those billboards every quarter mile. And it looks redundant. Why on earth would they buy this highway full of billboards? You guys post one time and you think, I'm not going to overwhelm them with the marketing. Mm -hmm. If you ever get in your car and you're listening to the radio now, you hear that same 1-800-411-HURT commercial Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And it's like, man, they keep playing the same freaking commercial over and over and over Mm -hmm. again. You might not need them this year. You might not need them next year, but you get an accident and you actually need an attorney. The first attorney that you're thinking of is Mm -hmm. Tom Nugent. 1-800-411-PAIN. That's crazy. 1-800-411-HURT. Marketing is the the best marketer wins. And it's about how consistent can you be at delivering your message over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I don't know if it's, maybe it's an Atlanta thing. I don't know, but... I can see the 411 pain sign. You can see it's it. It's crazy. You can hear the jingles. I remember like the trash raps that, you know, when they got real hip hop and call 1 800 411 pain, call 1 800 411 pain. Like, this is, I can hear it. You can see it. You wake up and you, you just visualize these things. You want your marketing to be, this is called sticky marketing. You want your marketing to be so sticky that. People who don't even need your offer know your message. Yeah, I was I was telling somebody like how we're like putting this content. Maybe it was at the boot camp, but um, how we're posting two two um, short two shorts on YouTube every single day. In addition to like our longer form, but two for sure every single day. Those two are now going on to Facebook. In addition to yeah. the two that Yanni's posting, so we're really like got four. Uh, post going to Facebook every single day of this same content. And it was like, yo, you don't think, um, you know, you're, you're going to uh, overwhelm people. And I'm like, you think people only see four posts a day, period. I would rather out of the 10,000, you're going to see four on be mine versus one or none or once every week in our world, we think, oh, we posted it yesterday. Why do we need to post it again? We'll post, we posted it yesterday. We'll post it again Friday. In our world, we saw two. In our customer's world, they saw a million and didn't even see your two. Yeah. So like, yo, it, it was, I was so impressed by that and I learned it. And that's why literally we post something from the morning meetup every day, like the call in the morning, every single day. I'll take it down, but I post every single day because Sarah, she did the same thing every single day. And I was able to associate her with this company. Mm-hmm. And if I was ever going to buy a product from the company, who, who am I going to buy from? Yeah. The person I seen post something every single day in the store. It was like the same four or five, like back to back. It was crazy. Yeah. And this also applies not just to sell, yeah. but to condition. So it's like if you're creating a community mm. and you want people to become really familiar with your community, what you call your community members uh, Trap does a really good job at this Wall Street Trapper. Mm-hmm. Every single morning, he does the same thing on his stories. His very first story, fresh out of the bed, is going to be Good Morning Trappers. That same mm-hmm. exact graphic, Good Morning Trappers. Then he's going to do a very quick clip of his TV on the Bloomberg you know, news showing all the, the, the stuff. And then he's going to start talking to you every single day. So now people in his community are calling each other trappers. That's what he wants is conditioning for you to be so sold out for the community that now when you think of yourself in this space, you're a trapper. Facts. Facts. That's tough. So one thing I think is cool, you manage, you still manage people. I don't manage people. You know? I manage their brands. So I have a marketing and branding There's company. It is a difference. Okay. So being a manager, you are managing every aspect of their life. Every aspect. Their they're personal, they're emotional, they're public, they're the marketing, who they are, your 
you're basically you have play-doh in your hands and you have to construct them into what you want them to look like sound like be it is a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> whereas managing a brand is only managing the branding or marketing and the getting the results from doing both of those things so i'm not necessarily managing people i'm managing their brands so, so i need first off i need help period okay, okay. How would you help me manage? Would you manage me or manage my brand? I would manage your brand. So for example, I don't need personal. I don't need like emotional support that a manager would have to do. Exactly. So that's why you need brand management. Mm. Brand management is able to have an outside, uh, be able to look at your brand from an outside persona and tell you what you need to change. Like I can look at your page right now and I can tell you everything that you need to change. Mm. I feel like people identify David Shands with social proof podcast and they don't identify David Shands for David Shands. Mm. And you were already a person like you had books, you had best selling books. You went from working at the Cheesecake Factory and teaching people how to build a t-shirt business. That's, People don't even identify you with that story anymore. They just identify you as a podcaster that attaches your audience to other people's story. But what about your individual story? Isn't what that a good narrative if that was my goal? I mean, because that's my goal, really, to keep people like singularly focused on one objective. So, I mean, I've never been... I'm not a big self promotion person. Yeah. But what do you What do you think? Do you think that is a good idea? I, I don't think it's a good idea because mm. ultimately, in the end goal, right? Like, obviously, if you were thinking about your five year, ten year plan, are you planning on being sixty and having your podcast? Right? Like, are you planning on Howard starting this thing or, you know, whoever has the longest running show that is senior level mm. um are you planning on right. being that person right if not if you're planning on being a person where you can go and speak at howard about what you've done and how you've overcame working at a cheesecake factory to building a t-shirt line doing seven figures and then starting a podcast and building a, a university around podcasting and all of these things you have to detach david the person from the podcast mm. and how do i do that you, you do that by personal branding, right? So when you think of P. Diddy, you don't think of his record label. You right. think of, you would book Diddy. You think of Diddy. You think of Diddy. For right? sure. You're definitely not thinking about Danny D. Kane right. making the band <laughs> and all of the Day other 26, people. you're not thinking about that. You're not thinking about all the people that Diddy has built. You're not thinking about all the products that Diddy is attached to. When we think of Beyonce, we don't think of Darion. We don't think of Ivy Park. True. Not even Destiny's Child. We don't think of Destiny's Child because they do so good mm. of being a personal brand and letting their businesses live on their own. Mm. It's all about personal branding, right? Mm. And when you think about it, your personal brand dictates every move that you want to make. Mm. If you are not putting yourself out there as the person that wants more speaking engagements, you're not going to get them. What I see on your brand is that you care about social proof podcasts. Mm -hmm. I love it. So guess what you get? A bunch of people in your DMs that want to be on your podcast. You've never once articulated. You know? Did y'all tell her that? <laughs> y'all tell her what's no, in my DMs? of course not. <laughs> I have a brand strategy. Like, <laughs> I can tell you, I can, I can read most clients' mind and see what they're going through even before they articulate it to me because I can see what your audience is perceiving about you mm. that you're not seeing. Not one time have you ever went on Instagram and articulated and put a speaker's reel together mm. and articulated, hey, I'm now open for more speaking engagements. Mm. Let me know. Let me know where, where, where should I speak at, right? You just use the people that you're connected to and you say, you know what? Why they not booking me? They booking you because we feel like you sit on this couch all day and do podcasts <laughs> and you don't got time yeah. to be on stage with us, mm. right? Do you think that social proof in 10 years could be successful without you? Yeah. Really? For sure. Who? Absolutely. Who would take it over? Well, we have a, like, we got like five, six shows now. Okay. So it's a network. That guy sold his podcast network for like 300 million. Mm. So. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. 
I think that that's important for you to start training your audience to feel that way as well. Mm-hmm. It is it is very important for every small business that is listening to train our audience and our employees to work without us. Yeah. Get used to coming in the bakery and not seeing me. Mm-hmm. Like no one ever comes to the bakery and is like, I'm going to co-work with Skittles today. I'll be here every day. No one thinks that. I no know, one I thinks love, that. I love it though. <laughs> I'll be here every day. Don't I? I'm here. Oh, I live here. Yeah. But just, and, and that's but cool. Well, I and think, feel you. That's cool. And that's me too. And that mm-hmm. was me. Really? It's cool until you realize like, dang, I'm missing moments that I could really be living with my family. Yeah. I'm missing moments that, wow, my daughter came home with a, a whole speech and she knew it. And I wasn't a part of her learning that, you yeah. know, I think that is very important that we run businesses, but not let the business run us. For sure. So, yeah. And, but I, I think for my particular situation, um, I enjoy it and I would, I would sacrifice, I guess, long-term system stuff for, me doing what I like to do right now. It's, it's not like I, I have to. Sometimes I'm just here and we chopping it up. We talking about what we're going to talk about. But I think for the 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 space that I'm in right now, I love I love building. You know what I mean? I love being in the mix. Mm-hmm. And I don't have like my like on Thursdays typically I take my daughter to gymnastics. It's not like I have to be somewhere a certain time. Yeah. But um, I think also it's going to depend on. Obviously, what your goal is. Yeah. So I wasn't thinking, do I, am I doing some things that will prevent me from making 600 million later? I wasn't really thinking about that. I got to ask you another question, too. That something that me and Donnie were um, discussing. You think I'm too accessible? Yes. Certainly. Accessibility brings your value down. I'll be around, too. Accessibility brings your value down. I'll be so in the mix. Think about, I really hate saying names, but think about Beyonce. Think about Oprah. Think about Tyler Perry living in Atlanta, Mm. right? But you never see him. So if he does an event today and announced it right now on his Instagram, would you go? Of course. But if you've seen him every day this week, would you go? No. So I wouldn't be, I probably would go, but I wouldn't be as excited. Or if I had some other stuff to go on, I'd be like, oh, I'll see him tomorrow. Exactly. And I think that, again, how we run our businesses nowadays dictates the cult following that you're ultimately going to build. And it dictates how much people are going to pay you. How much would you pay somebody that you see every day mm. versus somebody that you never see and you dream to be in that room? Beyonce did not care that our, our financial crisis when she listed her renaissance tickets. I questioned myself and I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> like, I'm pretty good. I was like, babe, like, <laughs> this might be a gift. Mom. Like, mm. you get what I'm saying? Like, but she didn't care because she knows that the people that are going to be in that room are going to figure it out. Yeah. You either see me in Atlanta or you never see me. Yeah. I think that we've built our businesses to feel like accessibility means community. And it doesn't. You know, marketing is really the last thing. Once you come up with your idea and vision and stuff like that. And so oftentimes people would try to market before they even establish themselves. Mm. And so we had to like, we created a program where we help people like develop their personal brand. We help them develop like what they're going to actually sell. And then we go into the marketing campaigns because yeah. people be trying to go straight into campaign mode and they only got five followers. Right. Like, no, right. you got to build your audience. You got to get known for something. Like people need to know who you are. Mm-hmm. Like you got to establish yourself. You can't just come out the gate like, yeah, I'm going to be me. Right, right. Unless you got hella network. Right. You know what I'm saying? For you got sure, some dope sure, people that's going to help sure. you push it out. So, yeah. What is your strategy on Clubhouse? I would like to I know. I love Clubhouse. I, 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 and here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. We are, for one, I can't stay too long. Everybody be laughing at me because I, I'm going to start the room and I'm out after a while. Yeah. Okay. But, but what do you see for Clubhouse right now? It's, it's for me personally, as a woman, I love it because I ain't got to comb my hair. I ain't got to put no makeup on. I could just be at the house like, hey, everybody, what's going right, on? Right. So for me, 
you know, I love it. What I love about it is, is giving voice to people who have been afraid. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they were afraid of live streaming. They were afraid of YouTubing. They were afraid of doing things. And Clubhouse allows them to accelerate themselves through their expertise and not what they look like, yeah. not what kind of car they drive. Like a lot of stuff we normally see on Instagram or YouTube. It's not, you can't like, you can't judge a profile picture on Clubhouse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you can sure. only go off what they saying. Yeah. And so like they legit, yeah, I'm gonna follow you. If you're not legit, I'm not following you. And so the people who are truly adding substance are growing really, really fast. Yeah. And the people who are not adding substance, then you know, hey, you're not getting the followers. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> what, is your, what is your marketing strategy? Have you figured it out yet? Or are you just right kind of now? I kind of just building. jumped in, but I, I treat it like a marketing campaign. I'm gonna mm. do a room. I treat my rooms like webinars. Mm. So if you're very familiar with doing webinars, it's pretty much like a title, intro, content, call to action. Title, intro, intro content, content. Call to action. Okay, I got to process that. So title, that's yeah. the first thing you think of. Yeah. Then intro, where you're... But I'm introducing myself. Introducing yourself and, and, and how to engage with the room. So in the, it's a lot happening in the intro. In the intro, it's me, who am I, why I'm doing this particular room. And then from there, um, after, after I introduce myself, I'm like, hey, here's a coupon code for the room today. Like, go to my mm. site put in coupon code, blah, blah, blah. That's if I want to sell something. Because sometimes I don't want to sell nothing in the rooms. Um, but if I am going to sell something, I'm giving them a coupon code. I'm going to tell them how to get on my text mobile club. And I'm going to tell them how to engage with me on social media. Then I go into my content. And then I bring it up. I forgot Q&A. Bring All them right. up for Q&A. And then I get everybody moving back to the audience. And then I do my call to action. And I Thanos the room. So it's Thanos. Thanos. On us. Yeah. What? Okay. So... But sometimes you're just in the rooms. Yeah. And you're just like getting me. Your and that's, <laughs> is that a part of your your My strategy? Yeah. yeah, because I, I go into rooms where I know I can add value. Mm -hmm. If I can't add value, I'm not in your rooms. Yeah. I, I like to be a Do you a go to person. rooms and listen or are you just, you know, if, if I'm No, stage, I, there's good. some rooms I go and listen to. I kind mm -hmm. of be more, I'm more of a list. There are rooms where I'm in business rooms. Where I'm like, man, I don't know nothing about this. I want to listen. And folks see me like, my right, right. Up. <laughs> ah, like, right, okay. Right. But for the most part, if I don't want to come on stage, I'll just hit the dismiss button. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You know, it's so dope that I um it's like the early adopters you can see, like really where I am I, an early adopter. You That's and why I both. You, I'm, I've been going ham on Clubhouse. I'm trying to get on there more because I understand that once it uh, opens all the way up, mm -hmm. there's going to be a group of people, every social networking. When it comes out, mm -hmm. there's like, you got these stars or celebrities who have all the followers. Right. So like me and Justin, we in a chat and he'll send me a screenshot of his numbers. <laughs> and, but he be in there lit. Like he's, <laughs> he's just, he just be in there more yeah. than me. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so um, last thing. Why do people come, it, well, is marketing complicated? Yeah. It is. I ain't even going to sit here and be like, oh, no, it's awesome. No, because it keeps changing. Mm. Think about it. Clubhouse just came out. Yeah. Now you're thinking like, how do I put Clubhouse into my marketing mix? Oh, this new Twitter thing came out. How do I put that in my mix? Oh, people said I have the YouTube and, and, and Instagram and Facebook and IG Live and Facebook Live and influencer marketing and brand ambassadors. and yeah. It's like so many things you can do. And... I always tell people, if you knew the marketing, do like two to three strategies. Mm. Don't try to do too much. And then you will notice like well, my most recent book launch was probably my best marketing campaign ever. Mm. Like I got featured in Forbes behind it. Like wow. it was so dope. Um, and my book launch did really, really well because this is when I decided to like unlearn all the stuff I had known mm -hmm. myself personally. Mm -hmm. And was like, do the marketing campaign that you wish publishers would do with their mm. authors. And I went. Oh, <laughs> crazy. What'd you do? Man, we did mystery boxes. We did multiple, we did multiple color co uh, copies. We did a virtual shipping party. We did, um, during the whole pre-order phase, we had a party inside the Facebook group. Every day there was like an activity or an event. We brought in guest speakers. Like, ain't nobody lunch book like we did with the wow. Unclone Marketing book. Plus the book called Unclone Marketing. I can't come Gotta out the game the like... Box. Hello, guys. What right. my book? Like, no. <laughs> you do a lot of um, uh, ads? Uh, no. Like, you do my Facebook ads? Yeah. yeah. But we didn't do any. We, we did we did a very small... We didn't really... We did, like, 20K on the 
on the ad campaign for the book, mm. but the book pretty much ain't like stopped selling since July. Is twenty k not a good amount of money for an ad? No, campaign? no. I actually be like, I need to spend more. What do you average to this date? What do you average in your ad spend? Um, like when I do ads, I get a pretty good. Cause no, my, I'm talking about like, is it a like a monthly thing you're always spending no, on? No, ads? no, like I only spend a lot of money. I'm I just hired an ads agency, mm -hmm. and so we are gonna have like a dedicated marketing budget each month. But really, I only go hard on ads when I was doing marketing campaigns. So I'll take all that money, put it into the campaign, but I don't have like any evergreen ads going. My content substance for that. Now, for some people who don't mm -hmm. want to be creating content, they're gonna go the whole ad route, the evergreen ad route. So right. yeah. So a lot of a lot of what you do is like just organic, cool yeah. stuff yeah. without the without the, without it. all of the rules. Yeah. You know, people be like, "Oh, you gotta post three times a week, and you gotta." I'm like, "Man, I'm gonna post when I feel like." <laughs> That's just I'm just it. I'm just being watching because I, I, I just want to take the pressure off of being consistent mm -hmm. and showing up. Like I, you know, if I had to give people a strategy, just be consistent, mm -hmm. show up. I need to know you exist, mm -hmm. and showing up ain't like. Once a week, it's just not. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love the way you just carry it. And plus, you popped your collar probably 10 times during the episode. <laughs> she, wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm making a sound effect every time you do it. Wow. All right. So, COVID. Mm hmm How did marketing change the COVID? Or Man, did it? it didn't. It went up. Like, we did, like, my business crossed a million from when we started the business in 20. 14, 15. Mm -hmm. So from 2015 to 14, 15 to 2020, our business crossed a million. But just last year, we was close to 900,000. Mm -hmm. And that's from the crib. Really, I didn't go out and speak at all. Didn't do no, obviously nobody probably went out. Right. But a lot of the stuff I did was virtual. Um, I introduced a lot of new digital products and the book launch. That mm -hmm. was pretty much it. That's all we really did last year. That's dope. And then we was obviously closing out of our mastermind. So, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Because marketing is more important than sales. So, Donnie, do you agree with that? Sales is more impar important than marketing. They're Brian, both very important. Brian, sales or marketing? What's more important? Marketing. If you could be the best in the world at one thing, sales or marketing? Sales. Sales. Marketing. Marketing? Let me hear your let me hear your marketing response. Marketing is at the beginning of the sales process. You can be the world's best kept secret. You can be the best salesperson ever. If nobody knows what your product is, it's done. Donnie. Every billionaire in existence has a skill set in sales. The richest people in the world are all gifted in sales, whether they're selling products, services, or ideas. I think so. Absolutely. Why if I that? innovate, if I invent something or I'm the innovator of something, I have to be able to communicate that. That's a sale to anybody before there's an interest in saying, yep, let's take this, run with it, market it. You have to be, if you want to make money in this world, sales, period. But if you look at that same list of the richest people in the world, millionaires, billionaires, they're not all skilled at marketing. They're usually going to find help in the marketing area after they've already sold a concept. I don't know. I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg, salesman? Yes. No. He no. absolutely sold his ideas. No, for sure. No. I Obviously, we have to make a sale. We have to make a transaction to yeah. make money. Yeah. However, if you have an amazing product and you understand how to get this in pro this product in front of the masses, mm -hmm. people will buy it by default. But what did you have to do first? Market. You had to sell the idea to someone first. But selling the idea is a concept of marketing. Yes. They go hand in hand, but the question was, if there were one thing that I'd have, if there were one thing, because sales gives me the ability to sell my offers, your offers, their mm -hmm. offers, right? I don't have to have a specialized skill set to do anything else to make money other than sell somebody's ideas. But let me ask you this. How are you selling the idea that nobody knows about? Well, it depends. So I might be I might know you. I know somebody and you might be an investor. You might be somebody who knows other people. Right. I sell you a concept and you say, oh, I am extremely gifted in the area of marketing. Let me go tell three other people about this. And we're going to rally behind this idea because you sold me on it. I love it. Let's do it. But would you not agree that the product cannot go out to the masses without marketing? So now we're talking about mass sales. That's different. We're talking about mass marketing. The conversation, though, is if I could have one skill set or mm -hmm. one gift and do it, what would it be? 
that will be sales. Now, if we want to scale and we want to generate a certain mo- amount of money, now I need marketing. They go, they're both necessary. But if I had to choose one, I'm choosing sales all let me, day. Let me tell you why. Well, I, I think it's going to be based on everybody's individual experience. Cause I think they're both really important, right? So sure. let's say, um, I don't know if Ray Kroc was the best marketer, but he saw an idea and he was able to sell it. He was a, a, a milkshake salesman, right? So he can go sell somebody on getting a franchise. He can sell great skill set of sales, but that hasn't one. I don't really enjoy the sales process. Mm-hmm. I definitely don't. Um, I don't look at myself as a salesman mm-hmm. more. Uh, I don't really look at myself as a marketer either, but if I had to like have a skill set of like rallying people around something, even mm-hmm. if they don't buy it, I think the rallying around, um, I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of if you build your brand, you'll have very little problems with making money because you can market to a lot of people. If you have a following of people, Mm -hmm. the people who want to like make money will get in front of you and make offers. So that's why I've decided to get into buying. I think, I think you're not looking at, um, sales and marketing for what it means Holy, you're looking at how it applies to you. Let's, for sure. But in order to successfully market something, you have to understand the psychology of how people buy. I understand. Understood. Right. Which is I have to understand the psychology of sales before I can successfully market. I can't just get I can be in this room with all these people in here and say. I got all these people here. I'm telling you that I have toothpicks for sale. Who's buying? I have to understand what would make you buy this toothpick. I have to understand how you enjoy spending money, where you spend money. Do I have the right people in there? They go hand in hand, but I have to understand the psychology of people's sales and purchase behavior before I can successfully put that together a marketing a lot campaign. like marketing. I was just about to say that. That's no, literally but what you're, the what you're not getting marketing. is... Mm-hmm. In order to be effective at marketing, you have to understand first the psychology of buyer behavior. That's sales. I understand that, but I'm not good at sales. You don't have to be good at sales. You sold an idea. So even if you got all these people, all these people came in here, right? For no expense. They came in here because you sold them on the idea of what it means to be in this room. But he had to market it yeah, but that's to not, them. He did, but he already sold them no, something. No, no, that wasn't a sale. So definition of sale is the exchange of a commodity for money, the action of selling something, mm-hmm. or to a period during which a retailer sells goods at reduced prices. That's a sale, right? So sales is a transaction. Can I get some money out of you? Now, in terms of sales, like, all right, well, I had to sell my wife on marrying me or something like that. I get it. That's more semantics. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about what you just described is marketing. I think understanding marketing, like understanding marketing, you have to understand. I think they go hand in hand. But marketing is a whole nother concept of me being able to sell something, me to say something to you and get the money out of your pocket. Marketing is a method in which you deliver your messaging to a group of people so that they desire to buy something that you're selling. Look up marketing definition. Marketing, the activity or business of promoting and selling products or services. Yep. So even by everybody being oh, in this- just because there's a word in there, yep, like we, <laughs> like, like you were right. That doesn't- Even by everybody <laughs> being in the room right now, they were marketed on the idea of being on the Social Proof podcast. Correct. They were they, sold. They wouldn't have to be sold because they were, They. I mean, even if they were sold, there was nothing to buy. It's a free podcast. But even if they were, they were marketed, they had to be- no. no, they have to be taught the idea like, all right, cool. Being on the Social Proof Podcast this is going to build up your business. You're going to be around expert level entrepreneurs. They were marketed to that. I Even agree. the concept of selling in its sense is marketing because the yeah. thing about it, if you're going, say, a door-to-door salesman like you brought up, right? Mm-hmm. That's a form of marketing. That's door to, That door-to-door is a form of marketing. The same way door-to-door letters, the same way Facebook has. These are all forms of marketing. It's reaching and contacting people to promote your services or products. Mm-hmm. So everybody has to be marketed here to even be sold something Mm -hmm. you cannot sell something that's not marketed yeah there's no sales there's no transaction without people knowing what you have i can't go to mcdonald's and buy a burger if i don't know what mcdonald's is i can't be on the social proof podcast if i never heard what social proof podcast was Mm -hmm. marketing is the backbone of a transaction there will be no transaction if there is no marketing i think i figured it out Mm -hmm. i think i figured it out y'all ready for this 
Okay. I believe, and this is how I look at it. Sales is a transaction and marketing is awareness. So would you rather, would you rather want the skill set of being able to make a transaction or the skill set of being able to uh, effectively make people aware? Because most, uh, like a good marketer doesn't necessarily, in a corporate arena, I would, I would say a good marketer needs to understand the sales psychology and all that kind of stuff. But some people are just great marketers. There have been some amazing marketers that I met in high school that didn't do no research. They didn't understand business, but they knew how to brand themselves, whether they're just funny or they hoop or they brand themselves to be um, prom king or queen, right? That's understanding how to rally people behind something. But that's different than being able to, I'm on stage. There's a specific skill set of being on stage and selling to a large audience. That's a, you got to know how to sell, how to get the money out of people's pockets, how to get that transaction. I'll add on to that, right? The biggest commodity nowadays is being a personal brand. When you're a personal brand, for example, Kylie Jenner became a billionaire at 21 years old, right? She doesn't know it, need to know how to sell, but because her awareness is so large, so many millions and billions of people know who Kylie Jenner is. She can drop a toothpick today, Mm -hmm. be like, this is the Kylie Jenner toothpick. People will eat it up. She Mm -hmm. doesn't need to know any sales. She doesn't need to do anything, but her personal brand is the marketing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to sell at all. Yeah. It's the same thing with Conor McGregor and his tequila, The Rock and his uh, and his vodka. Like they don't have to do any sales. Their marketing is done by the personal brand. Hence, marketing is the backbone, mm-hmm. and marketing creates all. There's not a marketing team that doesn't have a sales expert on their team. Hi, in a corporate arena, co- a co- correct? A company, I mean, yeah, in a business, there, are, both, there are there are sales teams that don't have marketers. Because the marketing has already but been we're done. But still, we're still generating money. I, I was one How? for a long if you time. Can't, if you can't find nobody to sell to. <laughs> so the, the thing is, you don't un- you're don't still selling. So you said something earlier about you know sales just being an, a transaction for money. If somebody walked into my store and I normally sold a t-shirt for $20, mm-hmm. but today I'm doing a 100% off sale. So your transaction amount is what? Free. Am I still ringing that through my register? Yeah, because I have to account for the item sale, right? So sales is the I most. Get. You don't have to sell somebody to take us out for free. <laughs> yes, you do. Nice yeah, you do. I don't. I don't take everything that's available to me for free. Do you? Somebody has to buy into the idea. You're thinking what, about what, what sales. If, if You're thinking about sales, and nobody walked into the door. That's also an issue, which is why I'm. We're, we're saying similar things. Mm-hmm. Both of them are necessary. Yes. But if I had to rely on my livelihood and my life for mm-hmm. which one I'm selling all day because my ability to sell allows me the ability to attract investors, mm-hmm. customers, marketers, employees and people who can help this thing get bigger. I'm selling I feel that. all day. And here's the thing. It's all like your own perspective. I think if everybody was good at one thing, then, I mean, that wouldn't be valuable. So Right, because I there's think, also no point in being able to market and get 500 people in a room and we have nothing. And we've seen that happen. 100%. Over, we've yeah. seen that happen. You can get 500 people in the room for free or for, you know, whatever. And we do our thing. We impact them. We do this and we have nothing to offer. Yeah. That's tragic. 